I'd like to thank the Society for inviting us to present our work today. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Robots have captured our imaginations for nearly a century, with increasing realization of the potential benefits offered by robotic technology, including within our own field. The first surgical robot the Puma 560 was used in 1985 as a stereotactic frame for neurosurgical procedures and is scarcely recognizable as being related to the robotic surgical systems currently in use. While general surgery has been relatively late to the playing field, the use of the surgical robot was rapidly adopted by our gynecology colleagues, with the proportion of hysterectomies for benign disease being performed robotically, equaling the number performed laparoscopically and exceeding the number performed open or vaginally by 2013. While relatively late adoptees of robotic surgical systems, general surgeons are gaining ground with an eight-fold increase in the proportion of procedures performed robotically between 2012 and 2018. While the benefits of the robot over laparoscopy are increasingly being recognized, we've previously described the risk of inadvertent thermal injury during open and and laparoscopic surgery due to capacitive coupling, antenna coupling, and hand-to-hand -hand coupling. And while there are numerous proposed benefits of the surgical robot over traditional laparoscopy, there remains a risk of inadvertent thermal injury during robotic surgery. This risk has yet to be characterized. In order to address this question, we retrospectively reviewed the FDA Manufacturer and User Facility Device Experience Database also known as the FDA MOD database, using the quick search function. Our inclusion criteria included events within the last 10 years, between August 2009 and August 2019, that occurred within the OR or procedure room, that involved the injury or potential for injury, and that were associated with the use of an energy device. Search terms included fire, flame, explosion, spark or sparking, arc or arcing. The data was extracted and manually coded for the energy source associated with the report, the type of injury, the anatomical type, site of surgery, and the type of surgery being performed. The data were entered and cleaned in Excel with analysis performed using RStudio desktop. 233 reports met our inclusion criteria. When looking at the energy type associated with a thermal event, monopolar devices carried the greatest likelihood of being associated with a thermal event, with 51.3% of reports associated with the use of, mo of a monopolar device. The next most common source of thermal events in the OR were devices external to the patient, such as light sources, OR tables, and electrosurgical units. 13% of reports filed did not include data on the energy source associated with the report. When looking at the type of injury described in the reports, the most common type of injury was a major skin burn that required excision, grafting, or further procedural intervention. This was followed by minor skin burns, which required no further intervention, visceral injury, an injury to the surgeon or the OR staff, and more rarely, major bleeding events that required blood transfusion or conversion to a more invasive procedure. There was a high degree of missingness in this category, with 54% of reports lacking this information. The anatomic site of surgery was most likely to be procedures in the abdomen or pelvis, followed by those in the head and neck, with 38% of reports not including this detail. Reports were most likely filed after open surgical procedures, although 44% of reports did not include data on the type of procedure being performed. The number of reports filed per year ranged from five to 29, with a 37% increase in the number of reports filed per year during the study period. The number of reports filed per year by type of surgery varied tremendously from year to year, with the majority of reports filed for events during open surgeries as seen in green. Reports filed for events during robotic surgery, seen here in blue, increased to a peak in 2013 for leveling off between 10 and 15 reports per year for the remainder of the study period. 
When breaking the reports down by the type of surgery performed and looking at the proportion of reports associated with OR fires or thermal events, open surgery carried the greatest risk for an associated OR fire or thermal event, with 48% of thermal events being associated with an open surgical procedure in comparison to 29% for laparoscopic surgery and 21.7% for robotic surgery. Conversely, when looking at the proportion of those thermal events associated with injury, robotic surgery carried the greatest risk, with 74% of reported thermal events associated with an injury in comparison to 67% for open surgery and 51% for laparoscopic surgery. When looking further at the pattern of injury associated with thermal events by type of surgery, some intriguing details emerged. The pattern of injury associated with a thermal event during open surgical procedures was largely dominated by skin burns, with 31.7% of injuries being associated with major burns that required excision, grafting, or further procedural intervention, and 25% of injuries being otherwise minor skin burns. Only 1.7% of thermal events during open procedures were associated with visceral injury, seen here in red. 33% of reports were not associated with injury. The pattern of injury associated with a thermal event during laparoscopic surgical procedures was dominated by injury to the surgeon or the OR staff, largely shocks and burns, accounting for 18.9% of the reports, as well as skin burns, with 13.5% of injuries being major skin burns, and 8.1% of injuries being otherwise minor skin burns. 8.1% of thermal events during laparoscopic procedures were associated with a visceral injury, again seen in red, compared to the 1.7% we just observed during open surgical procedures. 48.6% of reports were not associated with injury. However, we found a strikingly different pattern of injury associated with reports of thermal events during robotic surgical procedures with 44.4% of reported thermal events being associated with a visceral injury, seen here in red, compared to the 1.7% for open cases and 8.1% for laparoscopic cases. Additionally, 18.5% of reports were associated with a major bleeding event, as seen here in green, defined as those requiring transfusion or conversion to a more invasive procedure. Only 25.9% of reports here were not associated with injury. While the study is limited by a large degree of missing data and an overall low number of reports available for more thorough analysis, we are planning to address this during an ongoing study using the full MOD database, as opposed to the data found through the quick search function, to determine if this differential pattern of thermal events and injury is representative of the complete database. The MOD database is also a voluntary reporting effort by the FDA, with reports entered by administrators, nurses, industry, doctors, and even patients. This results in a wide range of report quality. Nevertheless, the trends identified herein have important clinical implications that should be understood by the surgeon and the patient when electing to utilize the robot for surgery. In conclusion, Thermal events during robotic surgeries pose a risk to both the patient and the surgical team. Thermal events during robotic surgeries are more likely to be associated with visceral injury or major bleeding compared to those observed during open or laparoscopic surgeries. More information is needed to define both this risk and this etiology, and partnership with industry stakeholders is paramount to understand and mitigate this risk moving forward. I'd like to thank you for your time and attention.